Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is in a population of pea plants the frequency of the dominant red flower color allele is 0.7 and the frequency of the recessive white flower color allele is 0.3. What is the probability that the pea plant will have red flowers or white flowers? Usually when I solve this type of problems I show you how to use Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium According to this formula, we have P squared, which stands for the homozygous dominant genotype, plus 2PQ, 2PQ, which stands for the heterozygous genotype, plus Q squared, which stands for the homozygous recessive genotype. And when we combine all these frequencies of three genotypes, we should get 1 and 1 equals to 100%. As you see in this equation we have P allele and Q allele and P equals to dominant allele A and Q equals to recessive allele A. So we have two alleles and in diploid organism two alleles dominant and recessive can produce three genotypes. And three genotypes here make two phenotypes. So this is going to be genotype which make red flowers and this genotype would produce white flowers. So homozygous dominant and heterozygous means red pigment and two recessive alleles means absence of pigment. According to our problem we know that frequency of the dominant allele for the red color is 0 0.7 and frequency of the recessive allele for white color is 0 0.3. So now we can use these numbers instead of these letters. I show these calculations many times before and you also can do it on your own. And numbers are very simple, you even don't need a calculator. But today I want to show you different method how to solve this problem and you would know how we get this formula. So take a look, we have two alleles in our gene pool, dominant allele A and recessive allele A. And if we build simple Punnett square, so we have two alleles, so we may have following combinations. Dominant allele A here, dominant allele A here, inherited one from one parent, another from another parent. And dominant allele A and recessive allele A, dominant allele A, recessive allele A, and two recessive allele A here. And what is going to be frequencies of these genotypes? Not one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, and one quarter. No. We know that frequency of the dominant allele A is 0 0.7 and frequency of the recessive allele A is 0 0.3. So 0 0.7 here and 0 0.3 here. So probability of the homozygous dominant genotype in F1 generation. So what we see here inside the Punnett square is going to be frequency of the uh, genotypes of the F1 generation. So for example frequency of the dominant genotype is going to be 0 0.7 times 0 0.7. So frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype would equal to 0 0.49. Now let's find the frequency in the following generation, F1 generation of the heterozygous genotype and this is going to be 0 0.7 times 0 0.3. But we also have another, the same genotype uh, so 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, so it's going to be 0 0.21, 0 0.21 here, so we have to combine and we are going to have 0 0.42, the frequency of the heterozygous genotype, so 0 0.42. And frequency of the recessive, homozygous recessive genotype is going to be 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. So frequency of this genotype is going to be 0 0.09.
if we combine all these three numbers, we are going to get one. So this number plus this number plus this number is going to be 9.00. These three genotypes represent all genotypes in this F1 generation and these two genotypes would make one phenotype which produce red flowers. And this genotype here means another uh, phenotype which produce yellow flowers. So red flowers is going to be 0 0.49 plus 0 0.42 so it would equal to 0 0.91 and this is going to be frequency of the red flowers in the F1 generation and frequency of the uh, white flowers is going to be 0 0.09 or 9%. So this is an answer for our question. And again, now you understand why we have 2PQ here, P squared, Q squared. So we can say that A times A is just A squared or P squared if we'll use different letters. And when we uh, consider heterozygous genotype, it's not just PQ or capital A and small a, but we have to multiply by two because it appears here two times in Punnett square and A small a small so a times a is going to be a small squared or q squared or we also can say a small squared so now you understand this formula why it looks like this we also can express this formula as just Punnett square with frequencies and can find the answer and this is all for today thank you for attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.